Yep. Go ahead, uh, Cameron. Start us off. Okay. Hey, Coach now It's Cameron with the Curry Journal. Hey, how's uh, it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you doing? Great, thanks. It's good. It's good. I'm just curious. Um, third day of fall camp. Just what's it been like with the O line, and and kind of what have been early impressions of some of the guys who just got here, maybe a fall camp that weren't here in the spring. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what. I've, I've been very, very impressed with the offensive line. Um, it's been a great fall camp right now. It's 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 a lot different coming with the guys. You know, basically the five starters have played a lot of football. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's a huge deal. You know, we went third down today. They kind of threw a lot at us. They're going from even to odd and, you know, bear looks and twists and everything else. And it was just such a luxury to have guys that have seen that before and they're able to pick it up. So that's a huge, uh, huge deal. And then, you know, we got some young guys, uh, Mike Gonzalez, Luke Kandra. Um, you know, there's some gu young guys that are going to be there playing a lot of football um, to help us. So, you know, I really feel great about the old line. I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be something that um, we're going to be a strength for the team, I hope. But what I'm trying to press them right now is take it to the next level. Let's not just be average. Let's be great. So, but it, it's been good so far. We've got to keep doing it. Hey, Coach McNeil, Michael McCann, my Cardinal Authority. You mentioned the offensive line being a strength, and part of that is the depth. Um, what's your rotation philosophy when you've got so many guys that can contribute like that? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to play eight, eight guys. I was trying to remember the other guy. I was trying to think it was Brian Hudson. We got him, too. You know, so – those eight guys to me, and we're determining that right now, you know, and that's what I told those guys. I said, look, I don't care if you played, you know, 40 games. If somebody comes in, he's better than him, he's better than you. He's playing. we got to win. Simple as that. But m what I'd really love to have is eight guys that feel like they're ready to go. That's what we had at Ole Miss one year, and it was great, you know. A, a, a guy like Trevor Reed, I mean, he he's kind of struggles in the heat at times. Well, we're playing, and, and he gets a couple series off. That could really help him, so – that's kind of what we're going to determine in the next three weeks, basically, is who's going to get, you know, who's going to get what reps. But the way the way I'm looking at it right now, we got eight guys I feel great about putting in the game. And now we're just trying to determine, you know, how many each will play. But if if one guy just totally takes over a position, he'll play the whole game and we'll rotate, you know, a guy somewhere else. So um, but it's a great luxury to have. I'm excited about it. And what it does is it gives competition to everybody else. So everybody kind of knows. All right. If I don't bring it every day, then the next guy's going to be in there. That is the ultimate uh, when you're trying to trying to um, build a great offensive line. Hey, Coach uh, Matt McAvick with Sports Illustrated. Obviously, in, in your time as a coach, you've had a few stops in the collegiate game. I know it's only a few days through fall camp, but where do you think this Louisville offensive line unit ranks among all the previous offensive lines you have coached? I'll tell you what, they're right up there. They really are. I mean, I love them personally. You know, I think we have great young men on this team. Um, they're really into it. They're really trying. You know, I have a tendency to be a little crazy. I must think I'm nuts at this point, to be honest with you. But that's fine, you know, um, and because I'm going to push them to be the best they can be. And and I really, you know, I was also in the NFL for seven years, you know, and you, you think, you know, I was trying to tell them today, like, you know, what separates them from the NFL players? Because, they're, they're, I mean, you got the few freaks like Laramie Tunzel, some of those guys. I mean, those guys are unbelievable. But a lot of the other guys, it's just the toughness and the precision of the technique that separates them, you know. So I feel like this could be one of the best offensive lines I've ever coached in college if we can get that done, if we can play with precise technique and strain on every play and finish on every play, we could be right up there with the best. Now, we're not there yet, of course, and that remains to be seen. Uh, whether we do, do that or not, but uh, I think we're well on our way, and I'm excited about it. Hey, Coach McNaught, Cameron again. You, you mentioned something really uh, early when I, when I your first comment. You said you want this group to take it to the next level. Um, what, what's that next level you think for this for them? Yeah, you know that's kind of sort of similar to what I just said. Like, you know, uh, I had this deal first song, second song. Matt Luke, there's a guy that sang Amazing Grace. The first song was pretty good. Everybody's like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then they said, hey, sing it with soul, sing it with, you know, real feeling. The second song was unbelievable, all right? So that's what I tell those guys all the time. You can be pretty good, you know, and, and we're going to be pretty good. I mean, Cole, ben, Cole and, you know, all those guys, Caleb and Renato and Adonis, those guys are all going to be pretty good. But can we take it to the next level? Can we take it to that NFL level? 
you know, you say you want to go to the NFL. Well, the NFL level is if I'm supposed to put it, my head on the play side armpit, it's not on the play side number. It's not two inches off. It's precise. You know what I mean? And if I'm supposed to finish, I finish every single play. And that, to me, is taken to the, to the next level. And that's how you win these close games by, you know, it just just you're talking about inches off. And, and you know, anybody can do this thing pretty good. But do you want to be an NFL player? It, it's not the size. I mean, we got a lot of guys that look like that size. It's how they approach. They go to sleep. They, they're in there in the cold tub right now. They're hydrating. They're getting their bodies ready so they don't miss any. You know what I mean? Everything that is, is you know, what, what they call in the NFL, be a pro. That's what's taking it to the next level. And that's what, we, if we do that, we can be one of the best lines I've ever coached. And, and we're going to be doggone sure we're going to do that. Coach, you mentioned uh, Mike Gonzalez. He's a, a true freshman that comes in, and he did come in early, but it's not often where you see true freshmen kind of, you know, have an impact, especially on the offensive line. What makes him, I guess, a little bit different, a little bit special to where he's got the potential to do that? Well, he's got it all, really, to be honest. He's got size. You know, he's got flexibility. He's got strength. Um, and he's got intelligence. He's got character. I mean, you know, he, he – so – that he's the perfect example of a guy that can come in and write it, write, do it right away. The one thing I would say now, I've been trying to get in, hey, Mike, you take it to the next level now. You know what I mean? You can do pretty good. I mean, you can do good. But good doesn't beat Ole Miss. You know, good doesn't beat Clemson. We got it to be great. You know what I mean? And we got to be precise and all those things. And so, you know, I just think he's, I mean, he's he's a great young man. He's intelligent and he's, you know, physically, you know, ready to go. So that that's that's the recipe for being ready. And he's a very mature guy. So, um, you know, again, it, it's all of us can improve. Of course, that's why we practice. I mean, so we practice every day to get better and that's what he needs to do. But, um, I think he's going to end up being a great player have a great career. Hey coach, another one for me, you, you talked about this office line. You want them to be precise and really the kind of minute details of their game. This group in 2019, struggled to tackles for a loss, struggled in sacks allowed. They got a little bit better last year, but still we're kind of in the bottom third of the country. You you think that focus is what can help propel this group to kind of really kind of um, improve in that area consistently this year? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. You know, I mean, that's – and, you know, we're playing good people, and we're going to give up sacks. I mean, we're going to give up tackles for loss. But – you know, I, as a matter of fact, Ronaldo Brown, who was just out there, I was kind of getting on him. And, and a guy, I saw his set. It was a good set. You know, I had been telling him, the only way they can beat us is run around us, you know. And the guy did, and he, he might have got a sack. And I said, hey, no problem. We can fix that. You know what I mean? But we can't fix you oversetting and leaning way back. And, you know, so I guess, you know, that's that's the whole key to this thing is the higher level you get, the more precise you have to be with your technique. And if you're not, you're going to get beat, you know. So, um, again, that's – but there's a lot that goes into sacks. I mean, it could be the running back, could be the tight end, could be the quarterback didn't get the ball off, could be the receiver didn't run around. So it's not like, you know, and, and what, what the main focus for us is just do your job, you know, do it precisely with great effort and finish the play. And that's it. And, and if you do that, you know – now it comes down to, are you better than those guys? You know, if you're not better than those guys, you're still going to give up sacks, you know. But I think we do have some very good players. So I think if we can do that, then you're going to see a much improvement in those areas. Hey, Coach Mack. And you kind of already touched upon your rotation philosophy. I'm curious, how many guys do you think you could end up uh, giving meaningful playing time at this one? Do you think eight, nine, possibly more? Yeah, right now I'm thinking eight, you know, and we got nine and ten that are right there in the mix. That's the nice thing about playing more guys, okay? So now, you know, if you're if, – if I've been on teams where we play five and they know that's all we're playing. And then, um, you know, the guys that are like eight and nine are like, sure, we're never going to play, so they're not as much into it. If you play eight, then the ninth and tenth guy are like, man, you know, now we got to make sure we know what we're doing because we got to get in there, you know what I mean? So – I'm not saying we don't have a ninth and tenth guy that could play because we do. The problem is the ninth and tenth guy might not be better than the first eight. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we've we've got ten guys for sure that I would put in a game and feel very good about. We have some guys that played in games last year, you know, when they beat Wake Forest that, that one game, you know. So, but 
the, the, now it comes down to the competition part of it and who's better and who and all that because it's, you know, I mean, this isn't Little League. Everybody understands we got to win games and we're going to play the best, period. I don't care who they are, how long they've been here. We're going to figure out the five best. If there's if if it helps us to win games by playing six, by playing seven, by playing eight, we're going to do that. And, and then, I think that does because it keeps guys fresh. You know, now in the 13th week of the season or whatever, there's, they're not beat all the heck. You know what I mean? They're fresher. And uh, I think they're fresh in each one of the games. I mean, they rotate D-linemen in and out all the time. Why can't we rotate guys in? You know what I mean? I think that's a good thing. Last and question to Matt. Matt, when, go ahead. Um, one more for me. Uh, obviously, you've got experience in the NFL. Do you think anyone on this current squad has NFL potential based on what you've seen already? 100%. They all, I mean, you know, all the starters do. That's what I was just telling them after the deal. I mean, I've been there. You know, I was kind of shocked when I got to the NFL. I thought everybody was like, you know, 6'8", 400 pounds or in the 4'6". You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, but they're not. I mean, they're all like, I mean, the guy sitting behind me right now, Caleb. You know what I mean? Cole. Renato, Adonis, you know, all those guys, Trevor Reed, you know, those guys. I mean, what's the difference? That's why I just, you know, I was talking to Cole on the way in there. I'm like, what's the difference between you and the other centers I've had in the NFL? You know, and I'm just telling you what the difference is being a pro and playing with an edge and being precise and getting to sleep and, you know, working hard all the time. All those things are what separate a college young man from a guy that's making a living doing this. So um, that's what I, you know, I probably wouldn't be coaching like this if I hadn't been in the NFL because I wouldn't realize it. Now, again, Laramie Tunsils and some of those guys, Trent Williams, I mean, those guys are unbelievable. Maybe there's not a bunch of them. But all the other guys on the team, they're all trying to hold on to their butts, trying to make a job, and, and you know, they're very similar to the guys we have. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to push them. I'm trying to coach them like they are going to be coached in the NFL. You know, a lot of times – they get upset because the coach this way, and then they get in the NFL, and they're like, "Oh, I better do this now because." So I, I, I told those guys, "Damn, I coach you like you're already in the NFL because you know, that's that's going to get you there, and that's going to keep me here, and everybody's going to be happy." So that's why I'm doing it. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks, coach. Remember, Jeff.